Well, it's probably a good thing it's not tonight. At least a deer, you just never know. Hey, everybody, listen up. Before we start the coaches show, at the end, we're going to have audience questions. So some of you, I know who you are, already have some questions. But if you have some things that you're thinking about, we're going to need some audience participation at the end. Guys, we have a request from our audio people over here. They said if you'll take out Facebook, go to the Hartzell Broadcast Network, you can share the broadcast and it'll help our views. So if you'll do that on Facebook, do us a solid. We appreciate it. Oh, I need a countdown for when he gets ready to go. We're not 6.30 yet. You gotta wait till 6.30. You gotta wait till 6.30. Oh, okay, mine says 6. Now it says 6.30, okay. Good evening and welcome to the Hartzell Hoop Show. I'm your host, Margaret Ann Prater. And let me tell you what the format's gonna be like tonight. We're gonna have several different interviews. We're going to talk to the girls' basketball coach. We're going to talk to our athletic director here. We're going to talk to the boys' basketball coach. And then we're going to get some questions from the crowd. If you guys want to cheer, if you want to yell, boo, whatever, we're here to have a good time and to introduce you to what's going to happen during the Hartsville High School basketball season. Um, first, I want to introduce our broadcast team. I'm Margaret Ann Prater. We've got Mark Mizell, David Robinson, Brad Sheets, David Evans, and not with us tonight is Shane Wiggins. So thanks to these guys, we try to have a good time and – do the best we can with our amateur talent. But anyway, also a reminder, Hartzell Hoops Frenzy is going to be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So after you go do whatever with trick-or-treating or whatever you're going to do on Friday, make sure to stop by the gym at the high school. It should be a good time for everybody. So my first interview, now I'm, now I'm getting to you, is our athletic director, Pat Smith. And Pat, winter sports regulations just came out. They're talking about COVID, so I'm going to talk to you like we did um, Mr. Cooper, Dr. Cooper, back in the fall. What, what are they doing different? So let's walk through a typical ball game experience. Tickets. Can I get them at the door? You cannot get them at the door. We'll be all digital tickets, just like we were during football and volleyball season. And those uh, tickets, of course, will be available on GoFan. You can get those on your phone and have those up and ready when you come into the, uh, the doors of the gym and ready to validate. And, uh, you know, I think right now, I think Coach Orr's uh, Thanksgiving tournament, I think that'll be more traditional sales. But outside of that, every other event that we're having, wrestling and basketball, will be all digital tickets. Now, can I buy the season now, or is it game to game? How does that work? No, it's going to be uh, different from football and volleyball. And, in fact, of course, this is a moving target for us in our first year that we've had to deal with these types of uh, regulations and guidelines. So we're – actually going to do a more uh, week-to-week -week process with right. basketball season so we can see where and how we need to regulate capacity. Those capacity limits, I know that's been a big question on everyone's mind, is going to be at, um, at least 50% capacity. Okay, that was one of my questions. And seating, you know, are, are you, how are they going to, how are you going to social distance? Are there reserved seats? How does that work? Masks? Yeah, there are um, masks are going to be required coming in the gate. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, we got the auxiliary gym with JV games going, and we got a JV game going in the big gym, and then we'll have the uh, varsity games, girls and boys going on, just like traditionally have been done. Um, but seating coming in, we've got, you know, the digital tickets. We go fan, like I just said. We've got the all sport passes, we've got senior citizen passes, and we've got the AHSAA cards that we've always accepted. Uh, a little something different this year that they're doing. They're doing um, uh, was a reserved ticket, and they are on sale right now. And I know the, the basketball coaches may want to elaborate a little more on that when they get up here. Um, but Where I know can I get that uh, reserved ticket? That is through our bookkeeping at school. Okay. You can go through uh, Kayla Knight or April Davenport at school, and they can get those uh, for you. 
And, you know, I know right now I think the students are at like 50, limit on those, and adults are 150. So if you reasons. want your ticket, you better go get it. Yeah. And that will assure you the big thing that basketballers want to do is just to assure you that you'll get into the game. Right. Instead of waiting on GoFan. Now, what we're planning to do with GoFan, that reason we're waiting up a little closer to game time for just giving those out to the general public, we want the coaches – players and their families to have first access to those tickets. Well, and they should. And then, then what's left over will go to the public. So, uh, okay. you know, I don't know that every game will be like this, but we're going to give Austin. That's a big game. Coleman's a big game. The gym's usually packed out for those. And uh, we're going to give them like a private ticket link of their own. Okay. And just to assure them access to tickets. Some other games we may just be – like football was just, uh, you know, everything's laid out there for you. We do have limits on the tickets, but. And do we set those limits or the AHSAA? Well, we set our own limits based on the guidelines that the AHSAA put out. Okay. Okay. Uh, band and cheerleaders, I know we don't usually have a pet band, but cheerleaders, are they going to be able to interact and be on the court? You know, I've watched some SEC football games, and all the cheerleaders are in the stands. Yeah, that's a good question. It's something we've been talking about this week. Uh, as of right now, cheerleaders will uh, be able to perform. They will be on the. They can get on the court just like they've usually done. Of course, most of the time they're in the stands, but they can get on the court during certain times, during timeouts, during uh, halftime. Um, you know, one of the other questions about cheerleaders that's come up. I know some of our opposing schools. I've heard Coleman is. I know Decatur is putting a limit on the amount of cheerleaders that can come. Okay. So uh, then there may be some others that just say the visiting cheerleaders cannot. Uh, but whereas of right now, we're allowing our own and visiting team cheerleaders to come as normal. Okay. That makes sense to me. Um, concessions, how is that going to change? We got any new regulations with that? Uh, concessions will be pretty normal. We'll certainly be serving concessions. And uh, the only thing that we're uh, asking of our concession workers that they have on masks and gloves is they're serving people. And, uh, but, yeah, we're planning on doing And they'll uh, accept cash. We'll uh, accept cash, debit, or credit. Okay. Um, quarantine procedures. Um, are those going to differ from football? If you have, you know, they're, they're, I know it's constantly changing. And I'm just asking because I know I can just hear my mother in the back of my head. But what happens if they've been exposed or what happens if they're positive? I mean, she's a nurse. Yeah. She used to give you allergy shots when you were young. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what, what are their quarantine procedures? Well, we're talking about, you know, our teams. Uh, naturally, with the public, we want them to monitor their own uh, symptoms right. coming in. If they're running fever, if they're sick, stay home. Don't come to our event. Uh, players, you know, the coaches have done a great job all uh, throughout the summer work and throughout the fall. Uh, all of our coaches, including basketball, wrestling, everyone has done a good job with keeping our players at a distance. Right. Uh, you know, even in meetings, they've limited meeting times. They spread the players out. So if one does uh, get quarantined or one, you know, God forbid, is a positive case, then the others aren't impacted as much. That way we can keep our teams alive, our teams going. I've noticed some uh, schools around us have had to shut down their programs for right. a week to two weeks. And we have so far avoided that because we've done such a good job with social distancing and our, within our own groups. Well, and, and you got to think about basketball. The team size, the roster size is so much smaller. Football, you know, you've got 80 guys on a roster. Mm -hmm. Basketball, you got 12. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, that's so right. you really you don't want to lose anybody. Um, and football spread between the 10s instead of the 25s on the sidelines. Right. Basketball, we're, we are going to move the first uh, row of benches or uh, bleachers in. That's the first row to give more sideline space okay. and stagger our benches this time instead of the seats being side by side, kind of like the were if anybody was at a volleyball game. We're going to kind of stagger those to give some distancing between players on the sidelines. So that should should help during the game. And uh, we'll be sanitizing those benches and locker rooms in between each game and also keeping the ball sanitized for the officials. I noticed that stable. with the state volleyball tournament, they were constantly sanitizing the balls and putting new balls into play. So we're going to do that. We are going to do that with our basketballs. Uh, they're going to keep some Clorox wipes at the score table and uh, keep, uh, try to keep a fresh ball thrown in when the officials ask for it. Okay, my interrogation only has one more question. Uh, away games. So do we, are you going to announce to us how we're going to get those tickets if we want to go visit? Um, will that be up on the school website? How are we going to find out? If I want to go watch us play at Austin, how do I do that? We are, whatever information I get will be passed along to the public. 
as far as that goes. Now, I'm sure, I know Decatur's already discussed with me, you know, they'll probably, especially for the Austin game, be giving us when we go there, like a private link so I can get out to our basketball coaches to distribute to their players first. And then whatever's left from that, then those tickets will go to the public. So we'll be announcing when that's going to happen. Okay. You know, a timeline for that, certainly. So watch as as Facebook and uh, Twitter, any, any social media from, the Hart, from Hartsville High School, and that's where we'll, you'll post it? That's correct. Okay. And on your GoFan page, something that some people have had some trouble with, and they mentioned this dealing with tickets, on GoFan, like when I release um, Austin tickets in uh, whenever that is, a couple of weeks, for, say, from now, out for the public to buy. If you've been on there buying during football season, you haven't refreshed your GoFan page, those tickets will not appear unless you refresh their page. And I'm not sure what technicality, why that's such an obstacle. I have mentioned it to GoFan, but it's something I know even when I go on the administrative site and release tickets, I have to go on and refresh my page to, so I can see them. So that's on your phone, computer, or however you're buying those. Okay, well, I think we're ready from an administrative side now. I want to make sure to thank our sponsors, Eddie Pruitt Ford, Bentley's at the Outhouse, Life Church, and Quorum's Building and Farm Center. We're going to take a quick break. We're coming right back with the Hartsville Hoop Show. Thank you, Pat Smith. Thank you. We're up next. Go, okay. Joe. It's got to be right. <laughs> All right, and we're back with the Hartzell Hoop Show. I'm here alongside Coach Gary Orr. He's the head coach for the Varsity Girls basketball team. And, Coach, let's start about your coaching staff. You got anybody new this year? Who's going to be coaching with you? Well, we have a former player that's come back in town. She was with our junior high program last year, uh, Miss Alice Ann Glasgow. She's a former player that I coached in high school, so she's back with us. So, you know, that's going to be a great asset for us and for the young ladies to have the experience that she had from the past of playing for me. And also, she's a Hartzell grown and been around for a great long period of time. So, so. it's going to be you, Bucky Garner, and Alice Ann, right? And Alice Ann Glasgow, right? All right. That's a good team. Um, let's talk about your roster. Starting lineup from last year, is it going to be vastly different? Are we going with our same five? Who can, who can we expect to see when we're going to tip off in that first ball game? Well, we, and I know it's subject to change, <laughs> but you know people at home want to know. <laughs> well, we've got several back. Uh, we have Mason Marchbanks and Liliana Carty and Haley Holzhauser and Alyssa McMenamin back that all started last year. Uh, you know, of course, we have uh, Maggie McCleskey that was on the team last year and Millie Evans. So, you know, uh, that fifth spot is up for grabs right now, or all of them basically, uh, as long as the girls work hard and perform. So we'll see how that basically works out. But there's quite a bit of experience uh, with especially Liliana, Haley, and, uh, and Mason because they've been there for the, like, Lily's been playing since the ninth grade year and Mason since our eighth grade year. So there's a lot of just game experience with those four, uh, uh, with, those, yeah, with those three coming up. And, of course, Alyssa had a great year last year for being a sophomore starting, so we're, we're proud of her. So that would be great. Um you're hosting the Encore Classic. That's going to be November 21st, 23rd, and 24th. It's going to be at HHS and HJHS. How many teams you got in this thing? Who's participating? Um, how does this help your program? Because, I mean, that's a lot of work to host a tournament. Yes, ma'am, it really is. We have, like, 40 varsity teams. Well, you might we have 40 varsity teams that's, uh, that's participating, and most of those teams are bringing – they're junior varsity teams, and we'll play a total of 64 games over three da- over the three days, which this tournament will start the Saturday before Thanksgiving, which is like the 21st, and then I think the other dates are the 24th and 25th just before that. So, And it's always been good to us. Uh, Encore has been our top sponsor, and we've had several people that has helped us sponsor this tournament. It gives us a big fundraiser for the girls' program and help 
you know, and it's helped us over the past years with being a successful team because we get great competition in that tournament because as a program, we don't shy away from playing anyone. So right. We played the, the state champion teams one year, and this, this year coming up, we're matched up with Gaston City, Madison Academy, and, uh, and Sparkman High School again. So, Those will all know, be tough that's contests. A, that's a great yeah. test for our program right up front. And gives our girls confidence in in playing the season out. So, well, that'll be that'll be great. Let's talk about area play real quick. Coleman, Decatur, and Muscle Shoals. Who's going to give you the biggest challenge? Well, Muscle Shoals has got most of their players back, and they got one of the top players in the state, and they're coming into our area, which is going to make it stronger. So, you know, each night out now, uh, you know, you got to be well prepared to participate in that. Coleman won the area last year, so. You know, uh, we, we've got to do our part and continue to improve on the things that we're working on so that we will be able to compete with them. Uh, Decatur, you know, I don't know what they will have this year. They have a new coach. Uh, so I can't remember exactly how many kids they graduated from last year, but we're looking forward to this challenge that we're going to face, uh, especially with Muscle Shows coming in. Uh, you know, they were, they've been in the regionals the last two years, and... You know, so we, we've really got our hands full with their size and their experience, but we're not afraid of them. We've competed with them year in and year out, so that's really not a new thing for us. Uh, we just have to do our part as a team, and uh, I think these young ladies are up for the challenge. So That's great. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching the Hartzell Hoop Show. We'll be right back. I'm Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, and I'm here to tell you about the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. The versatility of the Big Green Egg is unmatched. It delivers big results as a grill, a smoker, and even an outdoor oven. Grill burgers, kebabs, steaks at 800 degrees, slow smoke a perfect slab of ribs, and even bake a crispy pizza. When the doctor cooks, I demand the best, and that's why I cook on the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. <laughs> All right, we're back with the Hartzell Hoop Show. Margaret Ann Prayer alongside Coach Gary Orr. Coach Orr, the offseason had to be challenging for you guys with COVID. Uh, what did you do differently? Well, we had to separate the kids when we started this summer. So, And it also, the big thing that got us was the fact that we didn't get to play games this summer. So the experience that the younger players would have gotten uh, during that time and being able to evaluate them during that time, you know, it sort of took that away from us. But as we, well, at the opportunity came to come back to participation, we kept the numbers down to about 12 in each gym and uh, we separated them with the coaches. So, uh, you know, we still got to see them in those aspects and that's kind of how we handled it. And we were blessed to get through it without any incidents of the team being shut down so that that's, was, that's that was wonderful. the biggest thing that's wonderful um you know in, when I interviewed football guys I always asked about practice so I want to ask about practice who is your best leader in practice and then I'm going to ask who you think the best overall leader is well I, right now I way and they are doing it, uh, you know, and they, they're, they're communicating with me very well on things that we need to improve on or in incidences that's coming up. So I've been very proud of them for that. And, you know, we have kids that are in different activities right now, like Millie's in band, so she didn't get to come over as often as we'd like for her to, but she's sp spacing that. And so I'm sure her leadership skills would be there also. And Liliana and... Uh, you know, Haley, they were involved in our championship competing volleyball program. So when they get back, that, that skill will also go in with the two that's leading us very well right now. I mean, it's just been, uh, you know, the things that those two kids have done so far in taking care of the younger ones and pushing them to do the things we've asked them to do has been great. So it's been great for chemistry. Oh, yes. Um, let's look at your schedule. You're going to start off with the Mortimer Jordan Showcase. Who are you looking to see there? Well, we're scheduled to play Ramsey High School, which Woo. we played them last year, and they're one of the top 5A programs in the state. I think they were in 6A last year, and they dropped down to 5 this year. Thank so goodness. That, that'll be a big challenge right off the bat. So. 
Well, and you scheduled two different Christmas tournaments. You usually don't see that. So why, why did you go with two? Well, with the, one of them's before Christmas, and the okay. other one's right after. And we, we uh, talked with Coach Chase at Spain Park. It's a really good tournament. Uh, like I said, we want to challenge them. We want them to be prepared when we get ready to go into area play in January. So you can't do that if you don't play quality teams. Right. And so we're, that's what we're looking forward to. I have not heard from Coach Chase about who we will play in his tournament. I know at the DOC that we're going to start out with East Limestone in, their first, in the first game, and they're, they're one of the top teams in 5A. They got a lot of their kids back, and they got a really good post player. So we're looking forward for our post players, a big challenge right there. Okay, final question, and you're off the hot seat. All right, let's look forward to February, March 2021. If you could be where? where what, are we, what are we marking our successful season with? <laughs> well, I would say, you know, we, if we could do well in our area, and, you know, our goal is always to try to get the area and get to the uh, regional tournament. If we can get to the regionals, great things can happen there. I mean, you know, you, don't, you just don't know when you get there. So me personally, I'm looking for the kids to improve weekly. And uh, my biggest goal is to get them to the regionals. Uh, and I think this group has an opportunity. We have, the, we have some experience, so we just got to make sure when the time, as we progress through the season, that our chemistry is getting better and that we're improving in the areas that we want to improve on, like cutting down our turnovers and being really rebounding the ball well and then our shooting percentages go up. Okay. Well, I want to thank Coach Gary Orr for taking time to talk to us, and we'll be right back. We're going to talk to Coach Fair and Key. You're watching the Hartsville Hoop Show. excited for another basketball season. We're excited about the work that Coach Key and his staffs put in, and especially the work that these kids have put in. We're going to have another great basketball season. We at Eddie Pruitt Ford like to say, Go Tigers! Welcome to Bentley's. I came from the mud. Desert on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. You gotta get it right up. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. All right, we're back with the Hartsville Hoop Show. Margaret Ann Prater alongside Coach Fair and Key. He's in charge of our boys' basketball program. Before we start, Coach Key, we've got to thank our sponsors. you got Eddie Pruitt Ford, Bentley's at the Outhouse, Coram's Building and Farm Center, and Life Church. Coach, I know there are big expectations for your season. So I'm going to start with my first softball question. How are you going to replace Tad Sibley? Good question. Um, there's always a guy every year that you got to replace that's really irreplaceable. Um, if you go through and look at the program, uh, I would sure most teams would say that this guy's going to be really hard to replace. What happens is someone naturally progresses into a role, replaces people that when they're gone. Um, you just don't replace Tad. Just like next year, we won't replace Brody, and we didn't replace Tra uh, Trace Hill. We, you just have guys that get better in the program and collectively – somebody takes on the role. Okay. Um, let's introduce Hartzell to your roster and what they bring to the table. Just talk to us about your team. I'll just let you go in whatever order you want to. All right. Sounds good. Um, we returned nine guys from last year's, um, I think, 14-man roster. And um, we're excited about that. That, that leads to some continuity. And uh, certainly the guys know each other pretty well. Um, we play a lot of pickup in the off season, and we didn't play as much this year uh, due to the uh, the lockdown. But uh, we play a lot of pickup. Guys, guys really know each other's games well. Um, 
So we're excited about that. In, in most years, you're, you only have a couple of guys returning, and you're trying to get the JV guys ready to, ready to compete. But, um, you know, this year we have four seniors. We'll have Tevin Shields and Elijah Kellick, Trent Wright, and Brody Peebles. Um, our junior class will be Dominic Simmons and Luke Ward. And, I, you know, we've found out last week we've lost Dom mostly for the year probably. Uh, Three months. Due to an injury. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that we'll have to try to f- cover that somehow. And, um, and then our sophomore class, we've got uh, three sophomores currently, uh, Kai Key and Ryan Dunn and Coleman Mizell. And then um, we'll just kind of see what happens from there. That, that's the only locks. Um, there's some competition and some guys we're watching, but um, nobody yet quite ready to step on the varsity floor yet. Okay. Uh, how will this year's team be different or better than last year's team? We're we really good. This is a really good passing team. Um, you know, where last year I think we were really good. We were really, really good in two positions offensively. We had two really good players that if we could get them enough space, they could find ways to score the basketball. And, uh, of course, Tad was our leading assist uh, uh, player as well out of our five spot, out of our, out of our center position. Um, but this team really passes the ball, and we have more guys who can make a play for someone else um, and themselves than we had last year at the same time. Um, length is a much, uh, much needed thing when you play a lot of 1-3-1 the way that we do, and um, we've got a lot of length. We don't have anybody over six foot three right now, um, but we, we got a lot of team length, and everybody's 6'2", six, 6'3", six, um, pretty athletic group. We'll be faster um, offensively. We will get it from end to end quicker. Some of that is due to the fact that we got more guys who can pull it off the rim and push it on fast break, not have to throw an outlet pass that kind of can slow you down. Um, And we don't have any slow bigs that we have to wait to get down the floor. Uh, We're not really going to be playing through the post a lot. So I think the pace will be faster. Um, The way we share the ball and certainly the way we shoot the ball um, much improved from over, over last year. That sounds nice and positive. Um, mm-hmm. What about, you know, i got to ask the COVID question. Mm-hmm. What did you do to change and adapt? Because I know you're really big on this teamwork. We're all a family. That usually involves getting in people's faces uh, and, and, you know, infringing on that six-foot barrier. So what did you do? Well, the, the hardest thing is, you know, we, we sort of pride ourselves on outworking people. And when you can't get there to work, you kind of feel like you're getting behind. And, you know, we've sort of adopted that philosophy to set, look, ever since we've been here that we're just going to outwork the people that we play against. And now you're at home. So right. we, have, we can't do that. You feel lazy. You feel out of sorts. Um, you, I got concerned. You know, are guys doing enough on their own? And so – and then, and then there's certainly that team chemistry thing. I mean, uh, spring for a basketball team is a really important time of year. And we, again, a lot of pickup. And it's a, it's a more – when the season ends, there's a lighter feeling, uh, you know, and you're, you're sort of uh, ushering your seniors out and you're welcoming new people in. And uh, no better place to do that than on the floor to kind of get everybody back together. But we, we really struggled with that through the lockdown. Um, but we were able to do some things. It was kind of neat. Um, we had some participation from where we sent out challenges to our guys, and they, they were sending me videos back because I made them record themselves doing certain challenges, and that was a lot of fun to see coming through from our seventh grade all the way through our 12s. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, coaching staff, any changes? Uh, one addition, um, uh, Coach John Landers, who's here tonight. ACT is, test uh, administrator ACT, extraordinary. Yes, he is. Um, maybe the best we have in that I, department. I, got, I was his I proctor. Mean, I'm just telling no you. Question. I was there, saw it firsthand. Uh, we're really lucky to have John. He's home. Uh, Hartzell's home to him. Always good to have people that graduated from Hartzell on your staff. They've right. been there. They're fully invested. Um, and having he and Isaac Taylor, those are the, the two that graduated from here and, and played here, and they're fully invested in the program. We're glad to have those guys. And John brings a wealth of experience as a scouter, um, a teacher, really, really good on the defensive side of the ball. And um, he's learning what we do offensively. And, and he asks a lot of questions. And um, he probably knows more about technology than I do, which is good. That's good. He, he's yeah. able to help me in the areas that I'm weak. Uh, but we're really lucky to All have right, so him. So tell us, who's your coaching staff? Just All right, Coach, 
Jake Miles will be back again um, as a varsity assistant coach. Coach Landers is also going to be in a varsity assistant role, but he's also a utility guy too. So we've used him everywhere, and he'll he'll be helping uh, run the practices for our JV, keep them well organized, uh, make sure we're on pace, and they're teaching the right things. Coach Taylor is going to handle the in-game coaching in the JV. Um, Coach Taylor has a has a really good understanding of our offense, having played in it as a point guard. He knows it inside and out, and um, Coach Landers is, again, going to handle most of the defensive side of the ball. Um, he's, he's learning 1-3-1, which is good, um, but he's a really, really good man-to-man coach as well. So um, great fundamental. We've got really, really good coaches who believe in, in fundamentals and player development, and that's, that's the cornerstone of our program. Great. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching the Hartzell Hoop Show. Hello, Mark. And we're back with Coach Farron Key. Coach, I know that uh, you like to participate or have your players participate in AAU. So I was going to ask you about that. How important do you think the AAU season is? Well, this year it was really important because we, we didn't have the opportunity to, um, you know, to be in the gym together. So when we got the okay to, to get back in the gym, our, the guys who played AAU were so happy to get back. It was a little different because we didn't practice this year. Um, our, we made a decision, um, all our teams and all our, uh, that our players played on, we made the decision not to practice so that we didn't have to quarantine kids, you know, unnecessarily. So right. we really used AAU as, a, as what it is, exposure and showcase for the players. Um, but, yeah, we have, a, we have a good number. And, and the, the thing that AAU does is it puts you up against the top-notch talent that there is, not just in your state but all over the southeast and sometimes beyond. And so being able to watch guys like Kaya and Ryan and Brody uh, last year with Tad, when they go out and compete against what's out there that are the best that there is to offer, and they're, they're competing against size and six and seven footer, uh, six and a half footers and seven footers, athletes, um, you become accustomed to it. And I thought that showed itself even last year through our run towards the end. We're not intimidated no, by athletic not. teams the way we once were because we've got guys that are seeing that on a regular now in the springtime and the summertime. Um, it certainly isn't the only avenue for a kid, but it's a great if, – if a kid's a good player and they really want to challenge themselves, that's where it's at. You've got to go do that. And so you recommend that for, your, for most of your players? I recommend it, especially for the best, of, uh, uh, the best players we have. They really need to go get a, get a dose of that. Um, because that's the only way you're ever going to know where you stack up. And, um, you know, if you only compete against those in-house and uh, those that were within your roster, you could be the best player on your team, but you might not be good enough to beat the teams on a state level. So I think it's really important, and I think you'll see that again this season with uh, the teams that we have on our schedule. Uh, we're not going to back down from those from those teams that look like they should be better than us. Well, now, have you had a player that participated in AAU – that just really benefited from it, that came back out a better player? I mean, somebody that you could just say, okay, that guy, that's the one who benefited. Yeah, I think, I think so. I think confidence is a huge thing. It's, it's uh, you know, we say all the time confidence is really easy to lose. Um, it's really hard to gain. And when guys compete against, um, again, really good teams and they compete against great competition and they perform well, um, the confidence can only increase. And, um I think there's another side of AAU too. There's certain, there's levels to it. You know, you've got your highest level, but then you can go you can go to a tournament every weekend somewhere and play. And I think that's beneficial as well for guys that are trying to become better players. Um, go play 20 or 30 games in a spring. Um, there's very little pressure in an AAU game. It's nothing like school ball. Um, you know, in school ball, there's an urgency there. There's um, there's an expectation, and you're playing for your school and in front of your community and. AAU, you're usually off in some side gym and there's nobody there but your mom and daddy. 
So I think that's an important piece too. And it's good to get those reps and run up and down the floor and get minutes. Um, but again, I think that I think you have to fit the player to the level that they belong at. Okay. Over the summer, I'm going to ask one more player development question, then I'm going to go to scheduling. Um, over the summer, did you have somebody, some of these young guys that just made a leap, that just really improved? Yeah. All of them. Really? Uh, okay. No. Um, you know, we were talking about this the other day. This, from where we were this time a year ago, um, we certainly see a lot of improvement in Kaya. Uh, much bigger. He's going to be a force on the boards this year. He's a really good rebounder for his position. Um, shooting the ball extremely well, becoming stronger. Um, just his IQ has improved. Um, shot selection, things that young players don't tend to understand. He's gotten better. Ryan Dunn. Having, people don't realize Ryan Dunn sat out a year, two years ago, and reclassified into the freshman class. So he actually missed a little over a year of competitive basketball. And I thought it took him a long time to readjust to competition. When he came back, he was a little bit out of shape um, and then just did not acclimate as quickly as we had hoped. And then he got, by Christmas, you saw the best of Ryan from Christmas on. Once he was acclimated, he was really, really, really good. Um, and he's, his experience this year, and, he, and he, again, he's competed it up most of his life, except for one season. So he's, he plays much older than he is. Um, he's probably our best on-ball defender. And again, he gives us another dynamic because he's so good in the open court with the ball. I told him the other day, I've, I've never had a player average 10 assists a game. I've had him average eight or seven. He's got a chance because there's so many weapons around him when he uses his ability to get in the paint he's going to be able to spread out to several guys that can make shots. So oh, that's really excited to, to see. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what Ryan brings. And Luke Ward, uh, Luke Ward's just been absolutely dynamite this preseason. Um, he's still trying to lark, work for consistency, but um, just been phenomenal. He's much stronger, taller, uh, confident. Um, we're, been, we're going to be able to play him some down inside and out due to some of his strength and improvement. Um, and, he's, and he's starting to come along on the defensive side as well, which was really kind of an area that last year I thought held him back from getting more minutes than he, than he, should, than he could have gotten otherwise. Um, but this year he's more balanced on both sides of the ball, and he's certainly got a long way to go. But um, there are going to be nights where that, that, guy, that guy's going to put up 25 for us, and nobody's going to know who he was. You know, they're going to think he transferred to us. That's all right. Um, but he's going to put up a lot of points this year for us. Well, and before we go to break and talk about scheduling, your fundraiser, mm -hmm. if you'd like to plug that, buying chances with Eddie Pruitt. Absolutely. Uh, we, we have a fundraiser going on with the boys' basketball program right now. We're selling uh, chances to win $25,000 off a new car. Um, like up that. Up to $25,000 off a new car. And um, we are sitting, we're pretty close to selling um, 500 tickets. We printed 1,000 of them. Um, those are $50 a piece. And they sell pretty well, but we've, we've hit a little bit of a lull here, so we're trying to make a real hard push between now and the and, um, and, and early part of November to see if we can't get those sold. So go out and buy your ticket. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching the Hartzell Hoop Show. I'm Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue, and I'm here to tell you about the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. The versatility of the Big Green Egg is unmatched. It delivers big results as a grill, a smoker, and even an outdoor oven. Grill burgers, kebabs, steaks at 800 degrees, slow smoke a perfect slab of ribs, and even bake a crispy pizza. When the doctor cooks, I demand the best, and that's why I cook on the Big Green Egg, the ultimate cooking experience. <laughs> All right, we're back with the Hartzell Hoop Show. Margaret Ann Prayer alongside Coach Farron Key. Coach Key, we're going to talk about your schedule. You're proving you ain't scared, man. You're starting at McGill Tulane. You know, Tell us about that. Uh, I don't know. My wife would attest to this, but I've, I've wanted to do that my whole life. Um, I've always been competitive. I've always wanted to play the best and beat the best. Even if we weren't good enough, I, I'm okay with losing to somebody better than me. I'm not okay with losing to somebody that's not better than me. Understood. Um, I think the only way to improve, I think, our, I think our volleyball program and our softball program and our baseball program has shown us the blueprint for what we got to do to win a state championship in sports. 
Um, and if you don't go out and play uh, people that have the opportunity to win, you have a false sense of security and a false sense of how good you are. Um, and we can go and we can go and try to win 30 games, and that wouldn't be hard to do. We could we could find enough teams we could beat to win 30 or 34, or whatever we wanted to win. Um, but Those I think there's a no. I, there's no fun in that. And, and honestly, when you're demanding guys play really, really hard and work really hard, they want to know where they are too. So we've got really competitive players right now that love competition. They know the difference between a, a really, really good loss and a really bad win. So. It's really hard. I think you saw that at times last year throughout our season where there were teams we probably on paper should have beaten worse and maybe gotten there faster and blown them out. Um, but we weren't able to, to do that because I don't think our guys really were engaged in the game. You know, it was they weren't as good as some of the people we played. And it's that's a tough thing for a coach to you always tell your guys every team's a, every team's good and prepare the same and do all that. But the kids are still smart enough to know the difference. So. Um, but yeah, we're our first ten games this year. I mean, it's going to be a, a state tournament run right at the beginning of the season, starting with McGill Tulin, who's probably going to represent the South in six A in Montgomery or in uh, in the Final Four, and we're going to go get them at their place, game one, with or without football players, which is part of the game as well, right? So All we right. got to get out and go play. You committed to go, so we can't back out on them now. All right. Um, no Morgan County tournament this year. That's right. We're just going to go with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to laugh a little bit. Um, look through your schedule. One game just kind of got me Oxford. I hear they're going to be one of the better teams in the state. Is that why you scheduled them? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, we had a really freak thing. I won't, I'm going to be real nice here publicly, so I won't say what I want to say, but we just we had a rival school that dropped us in September, which is not – They're uh, my next question. Which is not <laughs> what you do. It's not a real – Right, that's not, not class not a, move. Right. There's just kind of an understood. You don't change your schedule on your opponents in September. And, um, well, anyway, they dropped us. That left us two Friday nights open that we had filled. Uh, nothing we could do. They – they didn't really give us the option of doing anything else. So I scrambled, Coach, Coach Orr scrambled to try to fill those. And, um, you know, so we went and got Oxford. And I think Oxford will be another team that certainly can be in the Final Four. They've got enough talent to do so and a really, really good coach, Coach Van Meter. Um, you know, so I think they're going to be there. We wanted them. They wanted us. And so they're going to come to us on uh, Saturday, I believe, December 19th. So right before Christmas break, we're going to get Oxford in the house. And oh, that'll be fun. We're going to tighten the rims because they got a few guys that can really rattle it. So we're, uh, we're going to tighten the rims up really well before they come in. Um, let's look at area. you got a tough area. Coleman, Decatur, Muscle Shoals. What can you tell us about that? Um, you know, <laughs> the hardest teams to play are the people that know you best. Um, and they know your kids. They, they all are kind of – they're sort of friendly over the years. You know, kids get uh, familiar with one another. I'd rather play people that don't know us because, I mean, I mean that. We, we said last year that the most important game of the season was really beating Coleman in the, in the area championship game, getting Columbia at home. Columbia knew very – they knew us and they had beaten us the year before. They don't, they don't um, scout and do the things that are going to beat Hearts. We felt like if we could get out of – uh, away from people who are familiar with us, we would be better and harder to beat because we, the way we play, um, we felt like we had a, you know, a pretty good strategy and style of play that was going to be different. So I thought that happened. I, I mean, if if minor on any other day, minor's just better than Hartsel in basketball. But we we were able to be good enough to beat them, um, you know, because I think they didn't know us. You that know, was they, and, so fun. Yeah, and and I thought the same with Bessemer City and. So that, that's probably, you know, so your area teams obviously are very good. Muscle Shoals is really well. All three of those teams are going to be pretty well coached. Um, Muscle Shoals is going through somewhat of a rebuilding phase, but they're just always athletic and always good and quick. Um, again, extremely well coached. Uh, Coleman returns the most um, other than us. They return the most to the area. Um, and they gave us some trouble last year in the regular season, and we were able to get the best, best of them in the area championship. Decatur, they're just a wild card every year because they have so many guys that aren't on the roster the year before 
that are Come suddenly out. on a right. roster and you don't and they either came from Austin or they or whatever it was and so we'll just have to wait and get eyes on Decatur and see what they are this year but um we like where we sit there we feel like we got a shot to win it um you know that's certainly right now our focus is just going to be on you know, putting together some good practices and trying to get to that first game. I'm going to ask you my Shane Wiggins question. You don't have to answer it. He said, how bad do you want to play Athens in the postseason? Um, next question. <laughs> I told him I would ask. Next okay. question. <laughs> All right. Let's look at – I'm going to ask you the same question as Coach Orr, and we'll take a quick break. Look in February, March 2021. Where do you want to be? What, what's going to be a successful season for the boys' basketball program? Um, any of my players that are here are going to laugh when they hear this because they hear it every pregame nearly. We don't let people define our success. And okay. for us, success is how much we care about what we're doing, and that includes how hard we work and how committed we are to what we're doing. But you can really see when people care. So – if we care about what we're doing, that's step one. And number two, we talk about connection. If, we, if we're the most together team, that ought to be evident. Um, you know, we don't want to be a team that ever argues with one another on the floor. We don't, they don't argue with me back and forth. That's not how you win in the, in the, on, the, on the court of battle. Um, and we talk about that a lot. And then obviously we talk about how hard we play. If, if we're, we're the only ones that know if we're playing as hard as we can play, um, I have a pretty good idea after seeing them for a while, and I, I really like to push them to play as hard as they can play. So if we do those three things, we're, we've got the skill to beat anybody on the schedule. Certainly we can lose a lot too, you know, with a schedule that tough. But those are the three things we measure our success by. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. I'm going to ask one more question. We're going to take questions from the audience. This is you, David Evans. We'll be right back. You're watching the Hartsville Hoop Show. Hey, welcome to Billy. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. All right, and we're back. I got one final question for you, Coach, before we go and get our questions from the audience. Um, Program-related question. Last year, you and I talked about the culture, and I think you kind of answered this in our previous question, but I just wanted to give you a chance to say what you wanted to say. Um, you wanted to create a program, a way of life for basketball. It wasn't about you just coming in and winning ball games. Right. Have you done that? Where are you in that process? Just, it, you know, it – it's just a continuum. I mean, you do the same thing every year. You try to improve things. But um, what we believe in is what we believe in. We, we feel like if guys are committed to player development, um, we're always going to be competitive. Even in years when we're not maybe as talented, we're going to get better. So players should never enter your program in ninth grade and graduate in 12th grade and be the exact same player. So we really try to improve the player and help them improve, that's a big deal for us. And then again, kind of back to the, you know, just how much you care about what you do shows. And we don't ever want to be going through the motions. And, you know, we, we talked about that even today. I cut practice probably 30 minutes shorter than what we had planned because we weren't going about it the right way. And rather than, you know, beat the kids over the head trying to pull it out of them, sometimes it's just easier as the coach. you got to fill the room and fill the gym. and. You know, so we want to make sure when we're there, we're putting the right kind of effort forward. Um, you know, we, we reminded the guys of that just before practice. And um, we want to be able to, to be consistent with that. You know, and you've certainly seen we've not, you know, we've not won at the clip we'd like to win at every year, but we've always been really competitive. And I've never even, seen a game that we've been blown Yeah, out. I mean, I mean just, we've been hot clocked a few times in my first couple of years, and I think that's what happens when you haven't yet figured out how to compete the way you need to compete every single play. Um, so we're closer. Um, we're really – the crazy thing, and I can't stand it when we, we talk about it over, over – talk about it too much, we're really young. I mean, we, we have two juniors in the program, and we got four seniors, and two of them never got on the floor last year. 
So we're going to be playing, and it's going to always be the case in basketball, uh, just by nature of the sport. Um, you know, but we really like what's going on with our program. Our, you know, we're going out next week to our sixth grade uh, practices and watching these guys. Um, our seventh and eighth grade's in really good hands. Coach Harvin's such a good player development coach. He builds relationships with those players so well, and they fall in love with it. Um, and then we just try to pick them up and move them along. And, again, try to get players better. You know, we don't – we certainly aren't 100% on making every kid love it the same. Um, but we want them, when they're there, to be as committed to us as possible. Well, and don't forget, the Hartsville Hoops frenzy is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. All right, David Evans, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, I know there's some questions out here. Um, I wanted to start with Dana McCutcheon. Thank you. I'm going to be nice. Other than I am going to say something, I feel that us not participating in the Morgan County Tournament is the smartest thing we've ever done. You only become a better basketball team when you play the best of the best competition. Looking at your schedule, the tournaments we're in, that, that prepares you to go to Wallace State and then to go on and become one of the final four in the state and become the state champs. So I'm very pleased with that move. Secondly, we have, in my opinion, probably one of the best high school basketball players that's going to be on the court this season. Granted, I realize that there are other schools throughout the state that have a star like that also. So what do you do with that, Coach? How do you then be sure that we are spreading that ball around? Because they're going to double and triple team him, and we know that. So what, what do you do with that, Coach? How do you t coach that offense? Well, first of all, you um – you know, I think the first thing that, that I would say to that is when you have a player that's that good, there's a lot of really good players, and you, you said that. The saddest thing to me is going and watching one, two, three A uh, players who are as good as Brody or, or close, and they have nobody to play with, so they really can't play. You know, they have to put up bad shots and stuff. I think what you see with Brody – you know, we kind of have a joke with him that see if you can find a shot that I don't like tonight. And occasionally he finds one. But typically he has the ultimate green light. He's also a really, really smart player, and, and we use him as a point guard more than we use him anywhere else. But we have things that we do offensively for wherever he is on the floor. Um, I mean, as much as I think, again, I think we have really, really talented players. It may be the most talented roster we've had since I've been here overall now how that meshes I don't know but I think that starts with you know we've got to be really really multiple in how we get him involved as long and and then you feed your best player first they should be your option now that doesn't mean they're going to always take the shot but when you have the opportunity as a head coach to manipulate and get your best player the ball first everything seems to fall in the order and every guy on our team knows who our best player is but he also has great confidence in them, and you see that a lot with how we practice. You know, I get on to him occasionally in practice because he passes the ball to people that really can't make a play. Um, and I'll say, you know you're not going to do that in a game, so go ahead and show them what you're going to do. Shoot it. You know, and, um, but, you know, the, thing that, the, thing that, the best thing with him, and I said this to every head coach that's ever recruited him, his efficiency is off the charts. He doesn't overshoot the basketball. And there's, there's been games where I thought he should have shot it seven or eight more times. And he's just really, really, really efficient. He don't, you know, he's not going to miss free throws. He converts about 61% of his baskets inside three feet. Um, shoots threes at about a 47, 48% clip. And, uh, and he handles the ball. He's he got a string on the basketball. So, um, you know, but we try to help him, get him to understand, use your teammates to when, – when someone is locking you up, as kids like to say, use your teammates, and then they'll let them help you. That's a long answer. I apologize. But I did like your statement. Okay, all right, another question here. Tell us your name and your question. Chris Seal. Uh, I know you've touched on your schedule and how you like to make it uh, as competitive as you can. During – Every two years, the state reclassifies teams and things like that. We've talked about this before. If you could explain a little bit what the state did last year in reclassifying the teams in the 6A that will work into your schedule to make the schedule that you put, the tough schedule you put together to help you 
against those teams that got reclassified into the 6A? Well, you might want to they, repeat that just a little bit. I don't they know if did heard some, it. Um, I don't know, Coach Orr and I have talked about it. They did some strange things they've never done with reclassification this time, and I'll explain that a little bit. Um, if you're a 6A school, well, first of all, there's 60 6A schools in the state of Alabama now, and 20 of them reside in about a 20-mile radius of each other in Birmingham. So they've tried to disperse those to different regions, which has jacked up the rest of us. Um, but they took from Mortimer Jordan to the Tennessee line and from the Mississippi line to the Georgia line, every 6A school is coming to Wallace Hansville this year. Oh boy. And the teams going to Jacksonville are all in the Birmingham area or thereabout, somewhere in East Alabama, and they're all going to have to go up I-59 and go all the way up there. It's been a really strange reclassification. I've never seen it before. So it's really a north region, and we're going to have to be the best team out of Every one of those groups, you know, there's 12 to, uh, what is there, 16 schools or so that will be competing there. So it's, it's a really odd thing. Um, when you hear Northwest region, you don't think Pinson Valley. Um, you know, you, you, when you hear Northe Northwest region, you don't think Fort Payne should be traveling to us. Um, but that's kind of where we are. Okay, uh, who else? Somebody else had a question already? Did you have a question? Who was it that already – you had a question. All right, Coach, you, uh, we were fortunate enough last year you took our team to the regional for the first time in several years. What do you think, because we brought so many guys back, do you think that's going to help us going into the season? What do you think their mentality is? Well, you know, we, we aren't going to shy away from chasing, um, you know, trying to win it all, but it is harder. I mean, you know, I, I've mentioned this to a lot of people, but um, – We've only had seven classifications, I think, for seven years. And six of the seven state championships won at the 7A level are now in 6A. Um, Lee Montgomery, Mountain Brook, uh, McGill Tulin all have dropped from 7A to 6. So it's not going to be certainly easy. And um, so our expectations are pretty high, but we're also pretty smart about, you know, how we're going to go about it and compete and – you know, we know we're going to have some bumps there. All right, I had a question. Last year, just watching you folks play, it's you like to run. Your players love to run. It seemed like the, the most frustrating it was for us is when teams really wanted to slow it down. So what do you do as a coach when the other team just says, we're going to slow it down, but you want to run? What do you do? Well, it's, that's, that's always the deal, right? So – for a long time, we're okay with playing slow because we feel like we're pretty good at executing our, our stuff if we need to. But, yeah, I think the game against Bessemer City was a battle of wheels. Um, that, people don't know this about that head coach. Uh, he won a basketball game 4-2 to two about eight years ago. You can look it up anywhere you want to. He, beat, uh, he was at Brookwood. And he held, they held the basketball on, I believe it was uh, Bibb County held the ball, and I think there was five shot attempts the entire game. It was two to nothing. Yeah, you're right. It was two to nothing in a high school basketball game. That guy was not going to let us, which is odd because he probably had more horses than we did. Um, but that's the way he wanted to play. And believe me, we've revisited that over and over. The first thing you try to do is you would like to be able to press people like that a little bit and try to speed them up because um, you really can't do a lot about um, speeding the game up if you can't get the ball out of their hands. And without a shot clock in basketball, it really tests your discipline and patience. And, again, it becomes a battle of wheels. Um, you know, how much floor do you want to cover and try to guard some of those guys? And, you know, so that, that, that's just the eternal struggle. I have a question, man. Is yeah. there any hope for a shot clock? God, I hope so. Um, yeah, I think there's hope, but COVID has done so much to derail so many things that we had coming. You know, we've but you know we've seen the pipeline. I mean, what you see in the college level certainly. Um, they hold up on shot clock. Everybody says it's cost in training. You got to have somebody to run it. You got to be able to buy all the equipment. And schools, not all schools, are going to have the ability to do that. Um, the charge circle that you see in the college and pro game. You know, that's been a discussion as well, but. I think we're probably, we were closer 
uh, last spring, I think, to making it happen because we're seeing other states adopting it. Um, but I sure would like to see, you know, a 35, 40 second shot clock. I think it would help the game. You know, they could afford Pixelot cameras for every school that didn't have one. You <laughs> yeah, would think well, they could afford, I mean, just throwing that out there. Yeah, and those aren't cheap, are they? No, they're not. Okay. Do we have any more questions? I don't know. Does anybody have any questions for Coach Orr? He's over here, too. He loves to talk. He loves to get in front of the camera. Any questions for Coach Orr about the girls' basketball program? I think that was a hard no, <laughs> Anyone? Dana, you don't have any questions for Coach Orr? All right, I'm going to give you time. By the time I get to you, you have a question for Coach Orr. So, Coach, um, I, I'm excited about your season. I think that you have got great potential. I mean, there's some girls who I feel like play really well together. So, tell me, um, with a few new, new folks in that starting lineup, how does your offense look of being able to move the ball around um, where Mason is not your only shooter? Ah, here he's, he's coming to you. See, I told you he loves the stage. He wants to get up there and talk. <laughs> well, uh, this is a group, like, the junior class has been with Mason, and they played with her in uh, junior high, so they know her really well. And she's always been the type of player since I've been around her that would rather get some of the other ones involved. She knows her responsibility, and we try to make sure that she gets all the rest of the players involved. And we have uh, a couple of sophomores, uh, little uh, Carly Shipley and – Emma Roden has come up, uh, you know, in practice, they've shot the ball pretty well right now. So along with Maggie, who's played with Mason most of the time, and Alyssa, you know, I think my biggest concern is my assistant coach goes, you know that you're going to face boxings in one. I'm, you know, I'm like Coach Keith. Mason knows that she can get the ball to other players. And I rely on him quite a bit with Brody to ask questions and about how to go about that and plus having Mariah in the past makes us understand that sometimes Mason has to set screens or other things to make sure that they can't just stay on her. But she's the type of player, she can, she can get it when she needs it, but she also can deliver to the other kids and do, uh, and they, they're gonna be successful like he says, I'm counting on them to knock the shots down so they can't continue to do that. Okay. And I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank you for taking your time to come watch the Hartzell Hoop Show. Make sure to tune in to the NFHS Network during all Hartzell games. Mark Mizell is going to be on play-by-play. -play. I'm going to be color commentary for several of those. And if not, you can turn the volume down. And even if you really hate us, you can watch Pixelot because that will be on for every home game. So thanks a lot. Have a great night, everybody. Good job. Hey, guys. So excited for another basketball season. We're excited about the work that Coach Key and his staffs put in, and especially the work that these kids have put in. We're going to have another great basketball season. We at Ed Pruitt Ford would like to say, Go Tigers! <laughs>